Hey developers, today we're going to look at Spring Dependency Injection. We're going to look at the basics of how to get it running. And we're going to see how we can kind of take our Hello World app that we learned in our last tutorial and just add a few extra things to try to see how Dependency Injection works. So let's begin. So let me first be saying that there is some, there's a little bit of controversy on what dependency injection is in the Java world. There's actually a whole Stack Overflow article on it. And in that article, they talk about kind of the classical dependency injection that we're going to look at that I'll show you in a minute, where you use a constructor to pass in your object, uh, but then, uh, or setters. But then there's a kind of a, a traditional uh, dependency injection that was talked about by Martin Flat Fowler in his classic inversion of control containers, dependency injection pattern, who coined the phrase, which is a little bit different. But uh, I'll include links to these, both these uh, web pages at the bottom if you guys are interested to kind of understand a little bit more about the history of, of dependency, eject, uh, dependency injection and inversion of control. But we'll look at it in the aspect of spring and how it deals with dependency injection. So. If you don't remember before, we had created an amazing Hello World app. Not much happening here, but it kind of understand, kind of walked you through like how to get started. And if you want to learn more, just uh, look in the description or click here in the top right hand corner. You'll see more information about it. So let's let's do an example to try to make this more concrete. So I'm going to go ahead and create a class, and I'm going to call it Text Writer. And then in this, this is actually going to be an interface. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And it's going to be an interface called text writer. And it's going to just have one option here, and that's to write text. So we're going to have, we'll make it public string. We'll call it write text. And it'll actually have a string in it. And think of interfaces, I think of it's more like a contract that other classes have to implement for you. And then you can um, have different impl implementations of this text writer. So we're going to create another. And if you don't understand about interfaces and classes, uh, I'll, maybe in the future I'll kind of go over some basic Java development and polymorphism and, and how this works a little bit more. But for now, just realize that we're kind of creating like a contract and we need to have another class implement this. So we're going to go new Java class and we're going to call this one fancy writer and fancy writer is going to actually implement. Let's again, I'll make this a little bigger. It's going to implement the text writer class that we just created. And if you see here implements, you can see here it has a big red mark and it says, hey, you haven't declared abstract or implemented the class write text, the abstract method write text. So we actually have to create that. So public, we know it returns a string. It's called write text. It has a string in it. And then we can do something with it. So we'll just return something really simple. We'll return the original string and we're going to add another word at the end of it. We're going to call it fancy text. Obviously, you would want to do something more contrite than this, but this is just just a quick example of what this does. So it's going to take just our string that we pass into it and add fancy text to the end of it. And so we're implementing this text writer. So if we go back to our hello world, now nothing's happening here. Uh, we can go ahead and let's create a constructor for this. So if you remember, public hello world is our constructor. It has the same name as the class, of course. And then we could do something like this. We can do text writer, writer. We'll call it text equals, we'll just do that. And then inside here, we'll type in text equals text writer. Well, new text. Well, we can't, we can't actually instantiate the interface. So we have to instantiate one of the classes, which is fancy writer. And then inside here, instead of returning hello world, we can return text dot write text and we'll pass in hello. Well, we'll pass in hi. And we'll see what that does. So we're going to save it. So it, in our constructor, we created, 
we had this new text, we had a new fancy writer in it, and we put a high there. So we're gonna stop, we're gonna restart. It's going to load everything. No errors, that's good. So we're gonna reload it. You can see, hi, hey, fancy text. So it did exactly what we expect. It took the string we passed in and it concatenated the fancy text afterwards. So that's not too interesting, but you may see some problems with this if you kind of think think about it. Now, if we wanted to to test this hello world class, we would have to assume that this fancy writer class was created in it. And let's say this fancy writer class was connected to a database or doing something more interesting than writing text, it would be a lot difficult to actually to, to make changes to this because this is tightly coupled to the fancy writer class. So there's no real way we can make changes to it if we're just testing this one class by itself. We have to assume that the fancy writer class that it creates is correct and that it has everything it needs. Um, we might even have to use some kind of uh, some some kind of way to to look inside the class to see what it's doing um, to do some testing. It's tightly coupled. It's not exactly the best way to do it. So kind of the way of doing dependency ejection is is we can do dependency ejection on the setters or we can do dependency injection inside the constructor itself. So to do that, um, in the spring way, we can uh, kind of rewrite this a little bit better. And I guess you would use reflection if you're using testing like this to kind of get a hold of this fancy writer and maybe do something with it. But we're not gonna worry about doing that. We're gonna try to use dependency injection. So we're gonna go back to fancy writer and we're going to annotate it as a component. And that's gonna add automatically our import at the top. And then we're gonna to go to text writer. We're also gonna have that be a component. And then inside our hello world, we're gonna put in uh, auto wired. And this is just telling what this is doing, all these annotations is saying when it does its reflection when it actually builds the app it's going to look at all these beans this actually creates beans it's going to look at all these different classes and it's going to do the wiring for us in the background so what i mean by that is instead of having this hello world here we can actually have it go text writer text here being passed in and then we can just do this dot text equals text so you can see this is a, this is a subtle change, but we're actually injecting this dependency, this text writer dot text, into the constructor, assigning it to text, which is auto wired in, and then using that to display the text we need to. So I'm going to save it. We're going to stop it. We're going to restart it. We're going to see if there's any errors. Nope. So we go back to our app. So if we reload it, yep, still see fancy text. Everything's working correctly. So we didn't have to instantiate. We didn't have to create the class inside here. It's it's decoupled a lot better now. So that way, if we're testing this, we can just pass in our own text writer dot text right into the constructor when we're doing the testing. We can even stub out text writer dot text and put anything we want in it. So it makes it a lot easier for testing. And we kind of saved a few steps here by not having to write that other things in there. And you can imagine when uh, you get into larger programs, you have hundreds of classes just the wiring of all your dependencies can be a, become a problem. So one thing you can actually do is we don't actually don't even need the constructor. So we can delete that completely and this will auto wire it through the setter without us doing anything. So we're going to save it. And just to show you, hi, Eric, we're going to stop it. And now we're going to restart it again. And if we go back, we reload it. He says, hi, Eric, fancy text. So it's still working the same way. We don't even have a constructor. It's just doing dependency injection on the setters and it's doing everything for us. So that makes things even even easier. So we don't have to do anything. So we'll, we'll go into one more example here. So let's say we have another class and we're gonna call it regular writer. And this regular writer is also gonna implement implement text writer 
And I think there's a hotkey to automatically create this, but uh, well, we'll just type it out. Public, we know it's, a, it's gonna return a string, it has to return write text, and that has a string of s. And we have to return, and by the way, that's s implements. And it has to return, let's just say it returns s plus, I don't know, maybe we'll make it two uppercase. So it's just gonna take whatever text we have and make it uppercase. And we're going to annotate this with a component as well. So now you're probably thinking, well, we have two components here. They both implement text writer. How is this going to work? So let's see how it works. So let's stop it. And if we restart it, uh-oh, we got an error. Probably hard to see there, but what this says, Field text in COM program about basics requires a single bean, but two were found. So we actually have two beans, two components, and it doesn't know which one to use. So what can we do here? Well, one one thing we can do is add a qualifier. And there's a couple of things you can, there's there's always more than one way to do things, um, you know, Mr. Taldi. But let's go back to the fancy writer and we're gonna do qualifier. And then we're going to give it a name. So we're going to call this fancy, eh, doesn't really matter, fancy writer. Now we're going to go into our regular writer, give it a qualifier. We're going to call it regular writer. And then in our hello world, let's do this. So the first one, we're going to qualify it. If I can get it in here. First, we're going to qualify it, and we're going to call this one is going to be the regular writer. So let's just first try that. We'll, we'll change the text to regular. Regular. We're going to save it, and we're going to stop. We're going to run it again, see if it starts. Okay, this time it started without an error. And if we reload our page here, back to, okay, you can see it took it and it made it uppercase. Hi, Eric. So we know our regular writer is working. And we didn't get any errors, so we can actually do this again. So we can auto-wire it. We can put another qualifier. This one we'll call, um, the other one was uh, fancy writer. And we'll call that text writer fancy. So now if we go down here, fancy.write text. And we stop. And press play, start, it's compiling everything again. Now if we reset it, it's back to high Eric fancy text. So you could see here how we kind of auto wired all these things real quickly with just annotations. We didn't have to pass in all these into the constructor. We didn't have to new, it's gonna be really easy to test. So this is kind of the power of spring here and you're gonna be using these type of auto wired patterns, these different annotations basically tell spring that you're going to be wiring this all together. They're actually something called beans. Um, so you're going to be doing this a lot in, in spring just to make things a little bit quicker. So I hope that it kind of makes a little bit more sense on why you'd want to use dependency injection. I mean, it's kind of the heart of the spring framework. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, if you are a long time watcher or listener, uh, I'm still doing a contest where I'm giving a copy of my book away, Vue.js in action. If you'd want to get in that, check my last couple videos ago. I had some instructions in there. Check it out. Sign up for my mailing list. Have a great day, guys.